Hello there, this is Crystal, and you're listening to the Crystal Archive podcast. Welcome to the Crystal Archive Podcast, episode number 21. I'm Mr. Crystal, your host, and this episode was recorded on the evening of May 1st, 2009. Well, hello again, everyone. I'm so sorry for the delay. This uh, has been a very busy time for me, and it's been a really long time since the last episode. Uh, Episode 20 was released on Christmas Day last year, so that's around three months um, uh, for you, or no, I'm sorry, four months for you to wait for our new episode, so sorry about that. Uh, Might possibly be the longest uh, wait between two episodes, Uh, but I don't have those statistics on hand. Um, So sorry about that. We'll get into why it's um, it took so long uh, midway through the podcast. So well, let's get started with the uh, the news from last time. All right. So last time uh, I released the episode 20 on Christmas Day and. On that podcast, I mentioned that I'd be releasing three Christmas presents for you guys. I'm sorry, four Christmas presents. Um, One of them was the actual podcast that you were listening to at the time, Um, since I believe there wasn't a previous podcast before that for a while. um, There was number two, which was setting up our own Crystal Archive forum, which um, was set up through Star Fox Online's forums. Um, thanks again to them and to me, since I partially own it, but especially to DZ Composer, who made it all possible. He allowed us a, um, a custom sub-forum, which we can use for crystal-related topics and, um, and also, I guess, furry topics if you just want to go there. But uh, um, you just sign up for the starfoxonline.net's forums, and there you go. You can visit our sub-forum, which has its own theme and everything. Um, anyway, it... Uh, it, it worked out, and we got a few new members because of that, although uh, I know that all of you who read the Crystal Archive haven't signed up, so if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so, because uh, we could use some well thought, thoughtful and uh, well-rounded users that I know you all are uh, to give us some interesting topics to discuss. Um, let's see, the other, the other couple of uh, Christmas presents, one was the... Uh, the Star Fox, uh, Star Fox Adventures soundtrack um, was released a little bit after Christmas, a couple days after Christmas, and uh, that went out pretty well. It's there's over a hundred, there's 118 tracks, um, and it contains all available music that I could get for the Star Fox Adventures um, background sounds and music. Um, there were a couple of mistakes which I now need to correct. Um, there's like two. Uh, duplicated tracks and a couple of mislabelings, but all in all, it's the most complete um, Star Fox Adventure OST out there. It's got the most tracks and it is the most well explored. I have all the tracks named um, so that so that you can see where they actually appeared in game because I actually went through the entire game, played it through it all the way again, just looking for where sounds and songs were played, and I, I listed all of them save for the ones that I made mistakes on, which I'll be correcting later. Uh, But that's beside the point. Now, there were two other ones, I believe. Um, No. No, uh, one other one. And that was to release the Star Fox songs on... that were... that could be found in Super Smash Bros. Brawl as an OST for Star Fox Brawl. Um, I got most of those songs. I have most of them. And they're mostly already edited. They were at Christmas time. The problem is is that uh, I'm missing one song and I haven't just put it together yet. So I really need to get I need to get on that and finish that up. So sorry that's 
that's not available to you yet. Um, I'll get it eventually. And that'll be available on StarFoxOnline.net when it is uh, released. And I'll probably say something about it on the Crystal Archive. So look for that. Um, yet another thing I need to uh, get done. Alright, so the next thing that happened. We celebrated um, on January 8, 2009, our third year online. Three years of Crystal Archive. Um, and I even changed the badge at the top from you know, a thing that said 3.0 or 3, version 3 of the site, to a birthday cake that says three years on it to celebrate. Um, and also to celebrate, I released what can technically be termed my very first Crystal fan film. It's called Crystal, a young girl talking about herself. And it's based on a song named uh, Young Girl Talking About Herself, which is just a song about... Um, a quick, funny, humorous song about girls that talk about themselves on the internet and um, and just basically making fun of them. It's by Perry Grip, and I uh, I turned that into a crystal fan film, and it worked out pretty well. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's, it's fairly short, but very sweet. Um, so check that out. Check out that video if you haven't. It's available in high quality via YouTube, or um, you can even download it on the Crystal Archive. That's going to be on page two or lower uh, by now, because news since then has taken up space on the home page. Alright, next up, um, to get ready for new information and better ways of storing information on the Crystal Archive site, you know, ever since we started the Crystal Archive way back three years ago, um, I had all the session sections I have now except for fan films, which I added about a year ago, or maybe it was a year and a half ago, whatever. Um, well, now, what's beginning to emerge is there are more and more crystal-related mods for games, crystal fan games, and there are now more than two crystal cosplayers out there. There's five to seven. I'm not exactly sure how many there are total, but they're coming out of the woodwork. So, um, I've added two more sections, a fan games section that has mods and fan games, and a cosplay section for costumes and and uh, cosplay of Crystal. Um, so, in the in the fan games, we have oh, we already have pages for Grand Theft Auto Vice City Crystal mod by Nanogear, and I uh, and I even am allowed to, or you can actually download that mod from the Crystal Archive at that page. Um, I I have a new one from him that actually contains more than just Crystal. It has also has Fox, um, I believe Slippy and Falco and possibly some of the Star Wolf characters in the mod for Grand Theft Auto. So you can just replace characters with Star Fox characters. I also have pages for the, um, the, Japanese, crystal fur, the, the Japanese crystal cosplayer. Um, we don't really know who that person is or where they were cosplaying at. We just have pictures of it, so I, I mentioned that. I have a, a page for Skarai's, um or Scry's fursuit, uh, the first technically uh, crystal fursuit, um, and it has pictures and, and links to the people who made it, B3 mascots. And then I have a page for Crystal's crystal fursuit, um, which is funny that that's her actual name, but she's it's in progress for her. She's got um, the head almost made, and I don't know how far along she is on the suit. She hasn't talked to me in a while. Um, and then we have placeholders for uh, Project Curse, the cursed-based fan game. We have Star Fox Paths of Fate, which is a, a mod for um, Max Payne 2. We have the Unreal Tournament 2K4 Crystal Mod by Charlie Fox. Resident Evil 4 Crystal Mod by uh, Jung Guru. I'm sorry, it's a Spanish name, I believe. Um, we've got a page for, well, we've got placeholders for a page for um, Second Life Crystal costumes, and I know there's at least three or four of them. Um, that, that Japanese chat program that has a crystal um, character in it that I mentioned several months ago. And lastly, but not least, uh, Cat the Leopardess's body paint based crystal. Um, she's gone as crystal twice now, or maybe is it three times? I don't remember exactly, but. Um, she, I, I, I would have a page for her already. It's not for uh, because of lack of respect or anything, 
but rather there's just so many pictures to sort through and organize. She's, I've got just a ton of pictures of her um, from various people and from her website to, to get all lined up and ready to post. So do you knew, know of any other uh, fursuiters or, or, or fan games, particularly the fan games? I, I think I know most of the um, cosplayers of Crystal um, because I have, I think, two more that um, I have contact with but don't have pay, posted yet. Um, but do you know if you know of any other uh, crystal-related mods or uh, fan games that I'm not mentioning here, or I'm not going to, or if I don't mention it later on in the podcast because I have some news about that, um, just let me know. Um, all right. So the next thing um, that happened was we got a uh, a, a picture from uh, Rena Aima. I, I can never pronounce her his or her name, I don't know, it's Rena Ayama, I guess I'm going to pronounce it, um, they were playing Little Big Planet, and they made a crystal-based crystal, rela- crystal based sack girl, it looks pretty good, actually, very cute, uh, for those of you who don't know, Little Big Planet is a massive, uh, 2.5D platformer game for the PlayStation 3 that has won a lot of awards for being, uh, unique and, um, a very well, well-made game. Um, and it provides the ability to create your own characters and your own levels. So that's a big selling factor. Okay, the next thing that happened was on January 31st, I did a fan art update after a long time without one. And um, it was 228 new fan arts. And since then, I have let the fan art slide. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's closer to being released after this podcast, of course. Um, and other updates, which I'll be mentioning soon. Okay, um, we got those pictures and video feed of Crystal's Crystal cosplay suit, uh, how she built the head and everything, and even a a jaw test video. Um, Sorry, guys, uh, I just had a brownout, and uh, my internet connection just stopped. Uh, Good thing the computer's still running. All right, um, let's see. The next thing is from a very nice person, Bink7694, sent me um, the very first um, Crystal Archive fan art. Not Crystal fan art, fan art for the Crystal Archive, which I'm very appreciative for. Um, um, I'm, I'm actually surprised uh, that, that uh, I haven't gotten fan art sooner, although I certainly don't expect it. Um, it seems obvious now that now that I've received one that hey I, I could get fan art you know and so uh, hint hint you guys for if you wanna if you wanna show your appreciation a little fan art would be nice. Um, all right, the next thing was April Fool's Day, the internet's favorite holiday. So at uh, 11, uh, I mean sorry at at on April 1st at 4:01 a.m. I. Uh, I posted that uh, it's been a long time since I've posted a chapter of my fanfic, like almost six months or, or more. And so I decided, you know, I'll finish that up. So I posted it. But if you click the link, um, you'd be surprised to see a little screen that says, well, if you look at the, the actual link, um, it says, Conflicker Worm, do not distribute dot txt instead of, you know, an unlikely enemy dot txt so uh it says installing dot 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 and then done right after it and people were oh freaking out uh most of them were actually or or they didn't click the link suspecting something but it turns out if you scroll way down in that text file um it actually did contain the real chapter seven of the unlikely enemy an unlikely enemy my fanfic so the joke this year was that i pretended that I was doing an April Fool's joke, when in fact, there was real news that day. And that's why, uh, that's because I promised last year that it would be something that you wouldn't expect, because a lot of people last year were like, oh, it's I expected you to make an April Fool's joke, because you always do an April Fool's joke. So I said, well, you won't expect this next year. And so, and largely, you didn't. Um, a lot of you didn't get it. You thought either that the conflictor worm was there, or that I was playing a trick. Very few of you actually saw at the bottom the real 
story. So I think that was a success. But now I'm, I've got to think hard about what we'll, we'll do for next year. Anyway, so, um, An Unlikely Enemy, Chapter 7, was released. Um, and it's very, very long. The longest chapter I've ever written. Um, and it's basically a summary of everything that's happened so far, except from Crystal's perspective. Um, because she's basically awake now. Um, and I'll just, I'm giving a little bit away. I'm not really spoiling it. But uh, it basically shows the events from her perspective, and then Fox basically explaining the things that she didn't get to see. Um, and the whole story, this chapter, is written from her actual perspective, rather than a third-person perspective, or Fox's perfect perspective, which is what I've been doing in the past. Um, so I think this will be one of the only chapters that has um, Crystal's perspective. I'm going to go back to the third-person slash Fox's perspective from now on. I just wanted to do something different this, this episode, this chapter. Um, and largely, I mean, I've had people telling me it was... It's the best fan fiction, Fox, Star Fox fan fiction they've ever read, which is surprising because, as I keep saying, this is the very first um, piece of fiction I've ever written, save for a one-page um, uh, sci-fi story I wrote mid-high school. I've, I've always written technical documents. I've never written fiction before, so this is very encouraging. Um, so, the next thing, um, I waited until April 14th, um, I don't know that I waited, it just happened that way, that I had to make another post that I often do these days, now that I'm in DigiPen, and that is that I'm, I've just got a ton of work to do. Um, and I explain the nature of my, of my work, and, and why it was keeping me away, and, and basically that I won't be updating again the Crystal Archive um, for a while. I said in there, possibly another week. It turned out it was going to be another two weeks before I was totally finished. And this is really rare. Even with the amount of work you're doing and the and the amount of... and I, Even though I was using, had less classes, I only had three classes this semester, it took me until the Friday at the end of finals week to finish all of my work. And I was working throughout finals week, including the weekend before um... It was just a mad dash at the end. I even had one 20-hour uh, day where I just basically stayed up until 5 a.m. after getting up early that morning um, so we could turn in um, some stuff in time. So uh, it was really, really busy, but I'm finally finished, which is what I posted on April 26th, that I finished the semester and I have a week off, essentially, to, uh, to get myself reorganized and to rest uh, and start posting on the Crystal Archive. And so what have I done with that time? Well, um, I compiled a list of things to update, which I'll talk about in a second. But I also posted um, some stuff from my email, stuff that had been um, piling up. I had a huge full inbox um, at the beginning of this week. Um, so one thing is I added a wallpaper by Galaxia Fox to the download section. And you can see that. It's very pretty. Um, and then I have, uh, at the request of Nicet, who... Um, for those of you who don't know, is kind of a, a lurker. He kind of doesn't really talk. He just kind of hangs out on both Star Fox Online and the Crystal Archive. He doesn't post very much, but whenever there's some need or some um, thing that needs to be done, or, or, or he's often making suggestions directly to me of how we can pr improve things, and he's and he's been instrumental in helping me fix things in in certain cases, like reporting. I think he's reported bad links before, and he's definitely he's helped me a ton with getting um, the Star Fox 64 um, uh, sound effects files um, for StarFoxOnline.net. Um, so anyway, he requested a while back that um, the pre-shopped section of the images section, uh, where I post I post. Uh, Photoshop format files that contain the crystal um, official artwork without the backgrounds so you can use them in your projects or whatever. He suggested that um, a lot of people don't have Photoshop or anything that can open Photoshop files and why don't you provide them in another format that we can use? And I said, okay, that sounds like a good idea actually. So I sat down for about an hour, took them, opened them all up and uh, converted them into PNG format, ping format, which is is good. It's got um, it's got good compression. Doesn't compress very much. It's um, got a good color, and it has one thing that neither JPEG nor GIF has, and that is alpha transparency. You can create partial 
translucency in the image, which is which bakes, basically makes them almost the same quality as the Photoshop files. So if you if you want those instead, they're there. Um, have at them. Um, and finally, um, I posted this a couple of days ago, and that was that I'm working on a new design for the Crystal Archive. Um, I'm calling it version 3.5 because it's not a terribly big change visually from the previous version 3 that we currently have. Um, but I, I, I did this because, you know, halfway through the week, I was, I was working with, um, you know, crystal-related stuff, and I just had the urge to redesign the Crystal Archive because it's been showing um, some long teeth. It's been long in the teeth for a while. Um, there have been a few small things that make it just, just generally hard to work with. Uh, most specifically, there are images. Um, like if I want to post an image, I have to resize it before I can do anything. And I wanted to make the whole process of adding images to posts seamless. And I also had a problem that you probably have no idea about, but as a web developer is a cause for major concern to me, is the problem of float clearing. Now I'm going to just explain what this is, hopefully in a way you can understand um, without uh, actually seeing pictures of it, because seeing a picture of it really illustrates the point best, I think. Um, but let, let's see, um, so websites. If you have a website uh, like mine that has a navigation on the left and content on the right, let's say, or, or any object that, that needs to float, that's the term, float to the left of some text or some other object, then you have problems dealing with how does it know when it's done when it's when it's at the bottom of both elements now this is important for design because um, oftentimes you want the floated elements to be contained inside a container element and then at the bottom of both of the elements which is the end of the containing element you want to do something special like um, you want to make sure that nothing's floating behind there, so or below there, so that you can make sure that you have a hard break in content. Or in the case of building website layouts, um, if you want to make um, columns appear to be the same height as I do with my um, nav left navigation versus right content, uh, if you if you want to have the the content and the um, and the navigation the same length vertically then you can do lots of tricks and one of them is to force a clear inside a containing element using the faux column method and that's just a bunch of web design speak but anyway um, so trying to explain this better um, what happens is when you have when you have a containing element containing a floated element that is uh, of a certain type uh, such that it doesn't understand, such that the containing element does not understand to contain that element. Um, what will happen is the block element that you put inside the container will just flow outside of the containing element. It'll just, it'll just be, just go off the edge vertically, not horizontally. It'll just go off the edge vertically, downward. Um, and the ways you can fix that, there are about four methods. And uh, the wet method I've been using, which until recently I thought was the most compatible was to use a um, a special clearing element so everywhere I need I need to force a clear which was a lot I used a, a div class equals clear both close div and I put those all over the code just about everywhere there was an image or everywhere I had a major section of the website layout okay and that Putting all those in there and it just really litters the it really litters the, um, the the file structure and it makes things hard to read. But I didn't know that that the, or it was the best solution I know of until about six months ago. I stumbled upon a method that's so easy that apparently no one on the internet knew about it. It's called Overflow Auto, and that is you just apply the CSS rule Overflow Auto to the containing element and all of a sudden it realizes hey I'm containing the things that are inside me and everything just works with very little um, effort on my part I don't need to have any of those other things and so what turn so um, in redesigning this new site this new architecture and layout 
um, I actually built the whole thing without using a single cleared element. Um, so that's going to save a lot of space. It's going to make the code cleaner, which of course means that the CSS file that needs to be loaded with every page is smaller. And I've made a lot of additional changes that makes the site more efficient and more consistent in every way. Uh, in particular, uh, to deal with the image problem, I did something special. I provided an, an image class called full, which forces itself to take up the entire size, so I don't have to use clearing elements there. And I, pr I, um, I set the overflow auto, or I'm sorry, I set the containing element to say show overflow hidden, so I don't have to worry about um, images going off the edge of the page. And then, on top of that, I made all images have a maximum width of 100%. This means that if I post an image on the page that's actually bigger than the page, it will resize itself smaller to fit automatically without me having to do any special code or image working. So I think these these changes and others uh, combined will save me about 20% of the time it takes to make every single post and web page. Um, and of course after three years or two, one and a half years of using this new site design, I actually know better what I will, I will need in the first place. Um, so there's a lot of junk that was in my um, in my previous version 3.0 that is now gone and so as a result the, the all the files are much cleaner now and uh, and of course I made some slight visual changes I, um, I instead of going for a very dark blue background I went for a gray background and I think it provides a very nice effect um, I took the crystals out of the head, header bar and put them above it in bigger as a bigger image and a more dynamic one, um, certainly more interesting. There are three crystals now instead of just two. Um, um, instead of cutting the navigation bar off whenever it ends, I force it to go all the way to the bottom for a nicer effect. And I've changed the color scheme slightly so the overall appearance is that of a slightly lighter blue. Um, it's basically, they're basically all the same colors, uh, but with lighter hues. Um, other, otherwise, um, when I posted about this, I said that I've created a page, a preview, that shows off all the functionality I will use on my website. And it's true. I looked through the entire, pa entire website, all of my posts, all of my pages, and I found out what was what were all the things that I actually used as far as styling goes and structures go. Um, and I created demos of each of them here on this preview page, um, which you can still see, and uh, style them the way they should be. So this preview page will show you just generally what structures on the 3.5 version, whenever I do get around to finishing it, will look like. And that, uh, and and as for when that will occur, um, I don't know. It could be anywhere from next week to months from now. I don't know. I'm going to work on it slowly, probably. I, I had the urge to work on it really, really fast and hard these last couple days, and I've gotten it to a point where I can stop and say, okay, I have what I need to get started on a theme. But I'm I'm not going to go into a theme yet because uh, coming up, actually in a few hours, uh, my family is coming to visit and to see me graduate from uh, my university. So that's going to be exciting. Um, so naturally, I won't have time to post uh, uh, or to work on this for a few days. And additionally, I doubt that I'll get this podcast out before the end of the weekend. So you might be hearing this next week, um, uh, May 3rd or 4th or something. So uh, anyways, so that pretty much covers everything that's happened since last time. I know it's not a lot of news, but I've been really busy, as I've said in my posts. So... Even though I wasn't updating the post very much, I was still keeping track of what was going on. I kept a lot of links. And uh, after compiling all those links that I have, things to do and look at in my um, in, a, in the single text file, uh, I've come up with about eight fan fictions that need to be reviewed, and one of them's already been reviewed. I just I'm just waiting for some more. I found a new 3D model or two that I need to add. I'm not sure if I'll add one of them because it involves it involves nudity um, with private parts, and I'm not sure about posting that on the Crystal Archive, even though it is a 3D model and that's fairly standard. Uh, 
I think it goes against the um, my general policies of no gif. So uh, the next thing uh, we have a couple of updates by that guy. I don't remember his name offhand. Who has been working on a crystal head sculpture for a while? Um, he's updated with two more images, and I'll put those up as soon as I can. It's coming together nicely. I believe he's painted it now. Um, we have some new videos for Paths of Fate and the Resident Evil 4 mod. Um, some of them are really nice, and some of the Resident Evil 4 mods are very violent and probably won't be included, but um, I haven't watched all of them yet, so I'll make sure. I also heard about a Crystal Fallout mod that's uh, just recently become available. Fallout, the game for, um, I think it's PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. Um, has now a crystal mod, and so I'm going to need to explore that topic and post about it. I have well over 10 new crystal fan films to post. I did keep a list of them as I found them, but I just I never got around to posting them. Um, there's yet another cosplayer out there that I've mentioned, but I haven't actually um, had pictures to show until now. Um, and so I'm going to get that person's uh, pictures up as well as a page a page for her um, and uh, that is and that oh and of course there's hundreds and hundreds of new fan arts um, that I need to get to uh, and finally um, now this is not in the file but it's something that I've been working on behind the scenes and, and that is you know that I'm working on the Get Crystal in Smash 4 project, and um, I've begun work on that in a very small um, way, and that is that I have commissioned an artist, one of my favorite artists of Crystal, to um, to create for us a, a very nice picture of Crystal for the header of the site that I'll be using to promote the Crystal in Smash 4 campaign. I'm um, not going to show you what it looks like, but it's coming along very, very nicely, and I think you'll be impressed. Okay, so um, let's see. That covers my news specifically. However, um, I have a couple of things um, by the two major crystal game makers. One is by Chrono Reaper. He requested a few months ago that I read to you a special message on the part of Project Cursed. So I'm going to do that now. Um, it says, Project Cursed on hiatus. I would, uh, and this is Chrono Re Reaper um, talking here. I would like to inform you that after the recent events of losing a few members on the Crystal on the Project Cursed team this past winter, we have decided to go on temporary hold on production of the game. We have. We have gotten ourselves back on equal footing and have a, have hold of a few more devs um, to pull this project together and we are now focusing on going back into production. Though this will be a slow start, we are going back to the correct way, back to correct any of the mistakes that, w that may have caused us from going into production last time and we hope this will never happen again. As of now, we are focusing on building the game from the ground up and getting our project back on its feet. This will mean that there will be a few changes from this point on. Since we have lost one of our members responsible for the um, for providing the Project Cursed team with a website, we will go back to our previous wet paint based site and turn it into a blog with media information um, with media information on the game, what it's about, and brand new a brand new discussion um, forum, all from the same address. You can find our Project Cursed web paint site here, and he links to um, paptoonscape.webpaint.com, and that's P A P E T O O N S C A F E dot wet paint W E T P A I N T dot com. That's, I'm sorry, it's pe Pape Tombs Cafe. I should have pronounced it. Dot wetpaint.com. Um, so basically, from what I understand, is there was a falling out and a disagreement between um, a few key members of the Project Curse team, and a few of them up and left, 
leaving the original members with uh, with their hands tied behind their back because they didn't have the skills that those key members were taking with them. Um, and so they're trying to rebuild that that uh, talent pool and get it um, all back together. Um, so, oh, and he finishes with, uh, until then, cursed fans, stay frosty, the Project Cursed team. So um, they're having some major problems, but they're trying to get back on their feet. And I think they're it's in, an, it's in it for the better. I think they were going a little too fast originally, um, uh, focusing on getting voice actors and such uh, before they even had uh, like a, a functioning game demo. But they look to be on the right path now, so good for them. Uh, he also wanted me to say that they're looking for a programmer who can also do level editing. And if you're interested, please contact Chrono Reaper 88 at gmail.com. That's C H R O N O R E A P E R 88 at gmail.com. Or uh, Zavellius. Z- uh, yeah, X E V E L O U S at AOL.com. So uh, that's the message for Project Cursed. As for the other big Star Fox and Crystal related fan game coming up, uh, that is Pass of Fate, Star Fox Pass of Fate, well, guess what? I have a surprise for everyone. We have an interview with the creator, Thomas, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just jump into that right now. This is the interview with Pass of Fate creator, Thomas. Enjoy. All right, today we have a special guest. This is Thomas, and he's working on Star Fox Pass of Fate, a mod game for Max Payne 2. Um, and it's a Star Fox-based uh, adventure game. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce him. Thomas, are you there? Hi. Hey, so um, why don't you tell us a little about the, the project and um, how it started and, and what your goal, goals are. Well, it all really started when I um, was working on a project called uh, Project Solus for Resident Evil 4. That project didn't go so well and was subs- uh, cancelled eventually. I don't really want to go into detail as to why it was cancelled, but... Um, well, what was it supposed to be? It was a horror-based mod for uh, Resident Evil 4. It changed the story a lot, but uh, that was sort of one of the reasons why it was uh, cancelled. I had gotten comments on uh, my YouTube videos by a member who requested replacing the Resident Evil characters with Star Fox characters. And that was sort of how it started with uh, making the next project Star Fox based. I decided on Max Payne 2 because I had history with that game. I've modified it before, I've got lots of experience with it. Uh, experience enough to change it into a mod full of anthros. And uh, it started off as a mod not being for uh, Star Fox, but I still wanted to use anthro characters. I changed it to Star Fox because I realized they have a big community, and a friendly one at that. And I just thought that uh, Star Fox needed another fan game. So what is, what is uh, Pass of Fate like? And, uh, and, and describe the gameplay mechanics for those who have not played uh, Max Payne 2. Imagine Star Fox Assault on the ground all the time. Well, there's... It's not all going to be on ground, but there's bigger emphasis on on ground action. You can s- slow down time and uh, dodge projectiles easily. Sort of very has its matrix moments. Now, let me ask you about the the characters. Now, I know that there are. I mean, I'm not extremely familiar with the game because I haven't put in the time to research details about it at this point, but I do know that there are, in addition to most of the Star Fox characters, there are quite a few, um, as far as I know, um, uh, characters of your own. Could you talk about the characters and uh, what they mean to the story? Well, most of the characters that I've created personally uh, 
belong to a team called the Celtic Demons. They're the main bad guys that you're going after. Most of them don't have big backgrounds, but uh, Jack, the character I both voice act for and uh, created, he's the uh, leader of the Celtic Demons, and let's just say he's going to give Fox quite a lot of trouble. Hmm. What kind of personality is Jack? Very merciless. He doesn't crack jokes or anything like that, and he's... He's very angry most of the time. You'll find his character shouts a lot. Um, so what, what is the, uh, the current plot de uh, design of the game? How does the story start up and, and, and where do you go? How does Star Fox get involved with this story? Well, it starts off with the Celtic demons getting their hands on a uh, disc stolen from a Cornerian research team. The disc was created by Andros originally, and was supposed to be used for creating a bioweapon. I'm not spoiling too much on that though, but uh, Star Fox gets involved after the leader steals a lot of money and, make, and makes his team even bigger using the money. And he becomes a big threat to Corneria. That's when Star Fox get involved. Mm -hmm. So, like, what types of missions are there? There's a big variety of levels, and the, the objectives are always different. There are no objectives that are repeated. Uh, sneaking missions, destroying objects missions, not like the hatches or transfer devices, nothing like that. Uh, there's a lot more variety to it than that. Uh, there's even some uh, special ones like races. So um, you uh, you programmed um, and designed um, all of the game yourself, right? Including most of the art. Uh, is that correct? Yes. So could you tell us about the whole process of the mod development and 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 how you work? Well, I admit to uh, taking a look into the content of Star Fox Assault, but uh, I didn't fully use anything from it, just uh, used it in reference to building my own stuff. You mean like models or like gameplay code? Models and textures. Ah. So you built all the models yourself? Yes, there were small bits and pieces that I uh, used from various other resources. It's far too many to name. Mm -hmm. Like textures and things? Small parts of them, yeah, but they, they're all edited from their original content, so you probably wouldn't recognize any of them even if I did tell you. Okay. And what, what tools do you typically use for this development? I do all my uh, modeling and animating in a program called Milkshape. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. I've heard of it. Uh, it's yeah, it's. I I think it's um. Well, I've I've talked to other or seen other student projects um, at college who used those. I believe the uh, the format is easy to read in 3D. I don't know about the actual um, the editor itself though. If you want to fill us in. It's not easy to do if it's your first time. It's going to take quite a long time to learn. It's got a very strict learning curve. But the uh, end results are worth it. There is a uh, better program out there called 3DS Max, but um, that's supposed to be even harder to learn from what I've heard. I haven't tried it myself, so I can't say anything about it. I have used that program, and it's I mean, as far as 3D modelers go, it's not it's not that difficult. I heard it was not as good for animating um, as other things, uh, but it's good for modeling, is from what I've heard, and I've used it. it. It didn't seem too difficult as long as someone was there to teach you it. But regardless, um, yes. Uh, so you're using Milkshape 3D. Uh, what about uh, coding environment and language? What are you using? 
The language is an internal language used by Max Payne 2. It's relatively simple and easy to understand, but to do the things that the engine was not designed to do, such as vehicles and uh, hand-to-hand combat, to do them things you have to sort of use a lot of logic. So is it mostly scripting programming? Or are you directly, you're, you're yes. scripting mostly? Okay. That's not too bad. Uh, so how long does it take to make a, a typical level, uh, let's say, one that does not involve a customization of the scripts? Well, most of the time is taken up by uh, the lighting, setting up all the lights, uh, when the character gets darker, when they go into the shadows, things like that usually take longer than actually designing the geometry. Mm -hmm. But not just making the. I mean, I'm not. I'm not referring necessarily to the modeling process, but the uh, once you had the models in play, how do you? How long does it take you to script the environment to allow for the cutscenes and the enemy uh, enemy spawning and such like that? That's usually different every time, but uh, roughly around a few days, depending on how complex you want it to be. And and about how many levels are you expecting to have in the finished product? Or missions, I should say. Well, the number keeps growing. Uh, there's about 20 planned so far, so it's going to be quite a lot bigger than Assault. Well, that's good. And all of them are different, you say? Yes, very different. Um, could you? Do you want to tell us about your favorite one um, in detail, or, or would that give too much away? Or pick one that, uh, that wouldn't give too much away. I can... I can talk about one of them. My, uh, one of my favorites would have to be Crystal's first level, which was in the recent video I made. That was uh, Crystal's first level, and it's got a lot of action in it, and it's just very fun to play. Yeah, I have yet to, I have yet to put that video on the site, um, being so busy myself, but, uh, oh, could you talk about that? I, I remember, um, you appeared on the scene, the Star Fox community scene, just a few months ago, um, suddenly um, talking about your mod, and um, one of the big things was that uh, people wanted to see Crystal in different output outfits. Could you talk about that, um, that whole episode? <laughs> Let's just say I have never worked on so many outfits in my life. <laughs> There's so many designs people come up with, and uh, I've already got a custom design, well, two custom designs actually, uh, an assault style outfit and the adventures outfit. And people just keep asking for more. One request was even to have Dinosaur Planet Crystal. Oh yes, the, the old one. Oh, wow. And, and so are these people who just uh, they join your forum, or they just randomly email you, say, "Hey, it would be cool to have this the suit for Crystal." They are on the forums, uh, both Star Fox Online and the uh, forum I'm a moderator for, which is the Star Fox HQ. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Uh, I've I've heard it mentioned um, because uh, of the people posting on Star Fox Online your work and and giving us updates as far as the the game, how the game is progressing. Um, can I ask, and I think I already know the answer, Has have other characters um, received the same amount of attention as Crystal has in regards to your game? Uh, yes, there have. Uh, Fox has got quite a lot of outfits as well, and he's in the process of having all his animations redone because of a change in the uh, attack scripts. And Falco will be following after I finish Wolf. So Star Wolf's involved in this game as well, then? Yes. Can you talk about the Star Fox community and how you've seen, how, you've, uh, how, how the experience has been for you uh, working on a fan game like this? The community's great. I mean, it's much better than the Resident Evil community, I will say that. Um, they can be impatient at times, and sometimes a bit demanding, but I live with it. 
as opposed to the Resident Evil community, they... what? Well, let's just say they've, they're very self-centered. So they... They don't care about the trouble you're going through, they just want to play it. I see. Uh, so, so uh, the Star Fox community is more is um, interested in the actual development process. And... Well, some of them are. Certainly, um, it is easier to simply download a game than to participate in its development, but uh, I'm glad that you um, are listening to, uh, to the community um, and also working so hard on it. Um, I'm pretty much out of questions. Do you have any, um, any final words, or do you want to talk about uh, when you think you will release the game and, and any final comments? I don't have a release date planned, but um, I'm hoping to uh, have a lot of it done, if not completely done, in about a year, maybe. So a year from now. Summer 2010. Possibly. It's a big possibility. Alright. Well, excellent. Uh, thank you for coming on, Thomas. Um, any last thoughts before we sign off? No, I've got nothing else to say. All right, thanks. Thanks for uh, for being part of the podcast. Thank you. And that was Thomas, everyone, the creator of Star Fox: Paths of Fate. Uh, he was he he contacted me asking if uh, he could say a few words uh, about the project since people were asking, and and if I didn't want to have him on the podcast, then he wanted he was all gung ho. Tell me how to make a podcast myself. And I said, sure, I'd be happy to have you on. So that's how that happened. And uh, hopefully that information is um, is good for you guys. I um, hope I asked the right questions and got the right answers for you. So before we go into our final section with emails, I'm going to cover um, the small amount of Star Fox-related news that we've had since the last podcast. First of all... Um, on Go Nintendo, there was posted a video um, that looks to be a long undiscovered Easter egg um, related to Star Fox that can be found in Majora's Mask, The Legend of Zelda's Majora's Mask. And it's um, it's actually quite clever. I did not realize this, and I've never heard this mentioned before, um, and neither did the person who created the video. But if you collect the masks, you collect your masks... Um, in Manjaro's Mask, and you'll have to go to the video to see it um, totally, but, and, and I've posted a link to it in the show notes, um, but if you, if you get the masks, and I don't know if they're ordered automatically, but the way they're ordered here is you see a fox mask, a bird mask, the bunny hood, a rabbit mask, and a pig mask, which, of course, they... Uh, the the crea creator of this video corresponds to Fox, Falco, Peppy, Slippy, and Pigma. Um, so it was it's actually quite good. And considering the fact that Miyamoto um, was basically in charge of Star Fox 64, and the fact that a, an an R wing uh, can be found through cheat codes in the uh, in the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, it's not. I would not doubt that this was intentional. Okay, the next bit of news is actually a bit more major. And it is a interview at G4.tv uh, or G4TV.com, excuse me, um, with um, um, I believe it's Dylan Col Colbert Colthbert of Q Games. Now, he was the original creator of Star Fox, the one who worked on and was in charge of Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. He was interviewed recently, and um, he had several things to say about Star Fox. He, he was creator of Star Fox 1. I believe he might have worked on Star Fox 2, and he definitely worked on um, Star Fox Command, um, Q, Q Games, and he uh, did. So um, the interview had some very prov provocative questions in them. Well, not so much the questions. The questions were fine. The, uh, the answers were pro provocative. So I'm going to just read a few of the questions and his responses. And it's a fairly short interview. G4 asks, uh, Would you like to do another Star Fox game? 
Dylan Cuthbert says, after laughing, after command? <laughs> Not yet. Maybe in another 10 years. I've made three. And G4 says, uh, well, it, there hasn't one, been one for the Wii yet. Uh, Cuthbert, yeah, the problem with that is it'd be a big problem, project, like a hundred people on the staff. It's not something we really want to do. I'm sure someone will make it. Uh, maybe they'll go t they'll take the franchise back to Namco. Uh, G4 says, uh, I hope not, personally, and he laughs. Uh, I'd rather you did it. Cuthbert says, well, maybe in the future. You never know. Star Fox is an interesting brand. It has a very hardcore audience. People like those furries are a little too much, and he starts laughing. And that's the second uh, controversial answer, I guess. Okay, G4. Oh, people are going to love that quote. Now, I have to ask you, why do you think it was always difficult for the developers, uh, for developers when Fox got out of the R-Wing? Fox is a pilot, but they always seem to get him out of, uh, out of it, like the tank. The tank was cool, but it... Is, since it still felt like an R-Wing, but why do you think people wanted to take him out of being a pilot and have him run around on foot? Culper replies, I think that's all Miyamoto. Whenever I speak to Miyamoto about Star Fox, he says it's it's not meant to be flying, sci uh, be a flying sci-fi shooting game. It's meant to be anything we want to think up. But the core fans don't want that. Miyamoto doesn't really care about that. He wants to make what he wants to make, so he just goes ahead and gets it done. G4 says, "Well, uh, so you'd never, so you'd never like to make one for the Wii, where you control it with a Wii mode on its side." Colbert Kul says, uh, "Yeah, no, the the Wii Wii controller would be a bit hard to use. I don't know, maybe the new one." G4, the Motion Plus, Colbert, yeah, and maybe that'd be more to play fun. Maybe that would be more fun to play with. I don't know. The Wii is a bit bit of a toy, I think. Oh snap. There's a controversial answer. Okay, moving back. So, Star Fox fans. Oh, and this is the the analysis of uh, by G4. So, um, we're gonna skip that. So, the controversial things he said. He doesn't want to make Star Fox. Oh snap! He thinks furries are crazy. Well, that's not really controversial. I mean, everybody knows that. Um, let's see. He thinks that the Wii is a toy. Yeah. Well. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, and what do you know, he clarified his comments just a couple of days later, which was largely ignored. Um, it says according to, um, uh, well, it was it was listed on Go Nintendo uh, via Kotaku, that he wanted to clarify with the following. I just want to point out that I wasn't having a, I wasn't having a dig at Miyamoto at all. I was just explaining how he works. He gets... He gets on and does his thing. He is an amazing creator, and that's all. That's amazing, and and that's what amazing creators do. They do their own thing. Um, the comment with regard regarding the making Star Fox for the Wii is clear. Uh, it would take a very large team, and right now I'm having a lot of fun with smaller teams. Uh, that's all there is to it, really. I know it's. I know how. Sorry. That's how I intended the comment, not as Dylan spurns Star Fox, shock and horror. So basically he's saying, it's not that he doesn't want to work on Star Fox, it's that the, the kind of team required to make a Star Fox game is huge, and he'd rather work on a smaller team, which I can understand as a person who's worked on a smaller team. It can be quite enjoyable. Um, uh, he also says that, uh, the he says, I also say the Wii is more of a toy, and it is. It's not derogatory. The Wii is a great machine with lots of bells and whistles, and this makes it feels, to me, to be more toy-like in comparison to the PS3 and Xbox, which are more media center-like. So I think that's a fair uh, thing to say. Um, I don't blame him. I think all of his points are well made, although calling the Wii a toy um, is, if, if not intended to be derogatory, it is definitely... Uh, playing with fire or walking the edge in terms of um, potentially being insulting, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, and all of, all of his other points are well made. Although the furries, like like any group, there are crazy ones and then there are normal ones. Anyway, so that concludes the news for both Crystal, um, the Crystal Archive, and Star Fox Online, Star Fox related news. Um, 
I might have missed something since I had to put this podcast together relatively quickly. Uh, But uh, if I miss anything, forgive me. I'll try and cover it next time. So, with that said, let's go to the final segment of the podcast, the emails. Volpix writes, I just finished listening to episode 20 of your podcast. I think it was one of your best, so don't fret about what you called the roughness of the episode. I especially enjoyed listening to you discuss your experience at the furry convention. The furry phenomenon is fascinating, and I've never been to a furry convention, so it was really interesting hearing about your experience. One thing that surprised me, furry, uh, Rainforest was a flight-themed furry convention, so I would have thought you would see more things related to Star Fox, a flight-based game starring a furry cast of characters. I'm glad to hear that you're continuing to work on your uh, Get Crystal in Smash 4 project. My hope is that Crystal would be uh, my co- my hope that Crystal would be a playable character in Smash Brothers Brawl was one of my, the main reasons I was interested in the game. And her absence was severely disappointing. I'll do anything to uh, anything I can to help get her into the next installment. Uh, I'm sure there are others out there who feel the same way. Your newly created forum um, on the Crystal Archive should be a good way to get in touch with them. Speaking of the Crystal Archive, I had a comment about the fan art section. I like that you archive so many crystal picks, but the navigation can be difficult when you're, talk- when you're looking for something specific, like large, high-quality picks of crystal. It would be nice if the picks were sorted in a way that made navigation easier. For example, an indication of art style, such as pencil pencil sketches, computer-generated, pastel, etc. And or the image size would be very nice. Even something as simple as the quality rating next to each link would be extremely helpful. Of course, I know you're busy with math homework and the like. Uh, In fact, I know all too well as I majored in math in college. The work can be incredibly time-consuming. And so, on the Crystal Archive, oh, I'm sorry, and so can computer science work, for that matter. Thanks for making the, take, taking, thanks for making the time to continue to work on the Crystal Archive, especially the podcast, uh, which I look forward to listening to each month. Keep up the good work. And that was from Volpex, uh, who we've mentioned before. Um, I believe this Volpex is the one who um, created the... Colleen um, from Road Rover's uh, fan page. Um, And so that makes us kind of a kindred spirit, as it were, because uh, he and I both made fan uh, websites for a female character and um, was one of the only websites focusing on said characters. So, um, yeah, I feel some connection to this guy. All right, so my response. I'm glad you enjoyed the podcast. You know, I get the impression that most furry cons are prim- uh, primarily steer clear of licensed characters, unless you count the fursuiters, who pretty much do anything. Um, I don't think it's legal to sell fan art for profit on a large scale because of copyright laws. Uh, commissions are probably fine, though. So that's probably why there weren't very many or any Star Fox related things at the furry convention that was flight themed. And, and plus, also, uh, the kind of furries that go to fur cons are less the furry fans and more of the furry lifestylers. Not to say that they're all weird or that there weren't casual furry fans there. It's just that they're a different type of furry fan. i um, glad you liked the forums and, enjoyed, and have joined them. Um, as far as I can tell, only about three people joined the um, Crystal Archive forums. Um, although that number has surely increased since I wrote the response to Opex. Um, unfortunately, cataloging the pictures would be extremely time-consuming. I would have to manually look at each and every picture, identify several characteristics, write them out, and then rewrite my scripts to handle these new tags. Now certainly, I look at every picture, um, for at least 10 seconds or so, to make sure that there's nothing offensive in it. Uh, Thus far, nothing has slipped through the cracks as far as that goes. However, to tag each picture would triple or quadruple the time required to do a fan art. A several several hour operation already um, for just a a few weeks worth of fan art. 
Uh, plus, there would be no easy way to add additional tags in case I thought of something else later. It would require some kind of image board software that I manually parsed. But alas, such public use would be um, illegal, an illegal posting of fan art. Because I'm not allowed to actually post other people's arts, so I can only link to them. Uh, so all in all, I hope that you see that it is currently infeasible to do uh, a rating system for crystal fan art. Um, and the only reason I do as much as I do is because I've automated part of the process. However, if you are volunteering for that job, then that's a whole other story. And if any of you want to volunteer to be um, a fan art raider or, or um, to tag fan art, um, just let me know. I can set you up and we can get that in there pretty quickly. Um, but actually me sitting down and do it, it's going to be time uh, prohibitive. All right. Toby writes, um, I'd first like to say that I've listened in on your 20th podcast. Very nice. I wanted to say thank you for mentioning my name when I reviewed that fanfic but never got around to it. Wait, sorry. A thanks for mentioning my name when I reviewed that fanfic but never got around to it. Sorry. Now, on to business. Um, I have two questions and one request. First question. For someone who's interested in voice acting, what do you think I should do to prepare in your in your opinion? I've I'm asking a lot of people and you're the first. Um, if I said I liked your voice and wanted to make an animation, could I count you uh, count on you to voice act for me? Uh, number two, I got I got my fan fiction up, uh, but I got stuck on chapter two um, on one topic. Uh, what planet do you think I should base it on? A random made-up planet no one's ever heard of, or one that's from one of the games? Now, as for my request, I would like to wish my ex-girlfriend the best of luck and hope she has a great life with her new boyfriend, and I'm wishing them all the best and a happier future. Thanks, Mr. Crystal. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And my response... To your number one question, your first question, actually, Alessia Glidewell, uh, the voice actress for, for Crystal, um, gave some pointers uh, during her interview about how to become a voice actor or actress, and you can have a listen to it um, in episode 18.5, which you can find out at crystalarchive.com slash podcast. Um, yeah, I specifically asked her several questions about how to get started in the uh, voice acting um, thing. Um, anyway, as far as me voice acting, you'll have to send me that animation first so I can make sure that I feel comforting, comfortable doing voice acting for it. Also, if it's really long or requires a lot of voice work on my part, I may have to decline unless I really like it because I have a lot of work to do already. Question 2. I think that you should use a random planet, but make sure to say it's not in Make sure to say it's not in Lilat, since it's a story about Cursed. Um, I guess that's. I guess I must have missed that part uh, when reading his question. Um, and it's. And that's very nice of you to wish her well. It's nice to see people being so nice to each other, even after what I can I can only assume to be at least somewhat heartbreaking for you a breakup of boyfriend and girlfriend. So good for you. Nathan writes. Um, if if they did a toned down Mortal Kombat and decided to make some cameo characters, could you possibly see Crystal appearing as playable? I sincerely doubt it. Nintendo is very tight with their characters. The only real time something like this happened was with Soul Calibur 2, and Link made an appearance. Nintendo New writes, What software did you use to power the Crystal Archive? I simply responded with one word. WordPress, the software that uh, that is a blogging platform that I use for the Crystal Archive. Um, Talon writes, or Tal In, as he wanted me to pronounce it, I am a great big Star Fox fan, and I'm wondering if you can answer a question. By the way, I have read. By the way, I have read your site, but don't, but didn't submit anything, so you don't know who I am. I guess he didn't comment. But I am there, and I love the site. Question. I love thinking about Crystal with Fox. It is awesome, but do you think that Crystal... Who, who do you think Crystal should be with, and why? Uh, why not someone else? Well, personally, I prefer 
um, Fox to be with Crystal. Uh, but I stand by Nin- Nintendo's decision, whatever they happen to make it to be. Um, at least for now. I don't know if they do something crazy like having her marry Andros or something. I might have to voice my concern. Okay, Crystal and Fox writes. Uh, I've asked many people before, um, and they never gave me a straight answer. So I thought I might ask someone who knows a lot about Crystal. So much that he has a site dedicated to her. Anyway, I wanted to ask, where in the game or official sites does it say that Crystal came from a planet Serenia? Serenia. I've played through all the games and never found that information. So I kind of think someone made it up and spread it all over the internet. So could you please set the story straight? I responded that it was easy. A picture says a thousand words, and here are the two pages from the American Star Fox Adventures instruction manual. And I sent them to you. Uh, The paragraph next to Crystal says, The only survivor of her doomed planet Serenia, Crystal roams the galaxy in search of answers. When a distress call call draws her to a small planet in the Lilat system, Crystal suspects that she may be finally drawing closer to the truth. So there you go. Crystal's from Serenia. No question. K13 writes, All right, Mr. Crystal, it's me again, and I love, and I still love Crystal and the website you're doing in the right, or, and the, and the website. You're going in the right direction. I've got Apple's iPod Touch, and with the App Store, someone uh, started and with the apps store I started wondering about uh, future apps and one idea hit my mind and that is the idea of an iPhone app for the Crystal Archive Um, possibly to check out new fan arts, fan fan films, etc. It would be my opinion uh, to be the best thing since your podcast. Also, if you ever consider making an app uh, and you're new to the field of app making Try um, putting the Saurian translator on the iPod. Keep up the good work. I respond that, well, I don't know if I would make a website into an app since you can already, uh, since you would have to download an app just to view a a new website. Um, I could make the site have an iPhone compatible mode, but that would take a while. As for my Saurian translator, uh, it already works on the iPhone and iPod Touch as a website. Um, just type the words and the site works the same. I have considered making a Saurian translator uh, for the iPhone. Um, I just, I don't know. That's going to be a long way off, if ever. All right, Jotino, uh, Joltino writes, I am called Jotino. Joltino, excuse me. Uh, I love Crystal, uh, and so Crystal Archives is something I really love especially the fan art and fan and podcasts. I love listening to you and learning about the these crystal updates. I love the crystal archives and I hope that you and the crystal fans have more power. So, uh, well, hey, I'm glad to hear you love it and them. Um, Steven writes, just wanted to check in. My iPod broke for about two months and I was lost without your podcast podcast and a bunch more um, but yours was the one that was most important since I have a long relationship with Crystal from when I was a kid so I got my iPod fixed two days ago and I listened to 19 and 20 uh, the 19th and 20th episodes amazing and I just wanted to say good work and I hope you finish your school uh, work and wanted to say hi so thanks thanks a lot Steven all right attack 1942 writes Hey, or hi, I'm, I've been reading the articles and listening to the podcast you posted on the Crystal Archives for about a year now, and I have to congratulate um, you on a very good job. Keep up the good work. I have, to, I, have to, I have a very short fan fiction that you can put on the Crystal Archive. It's about the history of my military, of course, fake. Um, it mentions Crystal in part of the story. Um... I have other small stories that have crystal in them, the same universe as, um, as in the same history, uh, but she is mostly a secondary character and doesn't talk very much. I wanted to make her a primary character, but couldn't with other people I had in my stories. So if you want them, just email me back. Great work on the site. Keep up the good job. Again, sorry for emailing you so much. I just keep forgetting to put things into my previous emails. I have two questions. If Crystal was real and came to Earth, how would you react to her? 
two uh, about the article about furries and what we are. Where can I find that again? So I'm glad you enjoyed the podcasts, um, Attack 1942. Um, if you want to have a fanfiction on the site, you need to post it online and then send me the link. I currently uh, don't host uh, fanfictions on the Crystal Archive, and I don't plan to. Anyway, I'll try and get it reviewed and onto the site uh, if you send it in. Um, if Chris was real and came to Earth, I'd want to help her if I could. If she's all right by herself, I'd like to at least meet her, of course. Uh, it would be awesome to shake her hand, um, say hi, and tell her how much of a fan I am. Um, the article about furries, I'm not sure. I wrote an article about Crystal and discussed furry fandom for Zintendo. I also talked about furry, uh, the furry convention. Um, on another article, which I've linked to, and there's um, the Why I Like Crystal Articles, uh, which has furry topics. You can find both of the articles, the Zintendo one and the Why I Like Crystal article, in the article section of the Crystal Archive. As for the my review of a furry convention, um, check the links in previous podcasts. I should have posted a link to it somewhere, um, but I definitely posted it on um, the Crystal Archive, I mean the Crystal Lovers Association, as well as read the entire thing on a previous podcast. All right, Galaxia Fox writes um, from Christ- from the Crystal Archive podcast, episode thirteen. Foxbird asks you to imitate a character from Adventures, right? Well, I want to know if you can imitate any character from any Star Fox game. If it could, it could be anyone. Um, if not, then that's fine. If you're a good artist like some people, would you color uh, with color pencils, markers, or digital color? And if there were any Star Fox stuff like candies, trading cards, and other things, would you buy them and have them as a collection? Alright, so that's the questions. Let's see. He wants me to do voice acting for any character. Uh, Let's see. This is going to be really bad. I'm just going to go ahead and say it's going to be really bad. Uh, But I have practiced uh, working with other characters, and I'll I'll try my best. Let's think here. Um, Let's see. Well, I can start with Bill, I guess. Um, Hey, Fox! I'm glad you made it! Or, uh... Don't get too excited! Here we go! And, um... Hey! See if I ever help you again. You know, it's kind of the the uh, surfer guy uh, voice. Let's see, um, what other voices have I tried? I've tried Andros. Only I have the brains to rule, Lilat. Those are... Let's see, what did he say? He said, um... I've been waiting for you, Fox McCloud. Stuff like that. It's just a deep voice. I, I, I have... I've been, you know, trying with deep voices in addition to high voices, too. Um, what other characters can I do? Uh, I've tried, I've tr- of course tried all of the Star Fox characters and all of the Star Wolf characters, but I don't think I do any of them very well. I mean, I, I oh, oh, you know what, I can probably do, um, Pigma, let's see, uh... Daddy screamed real good before he died! Yeah, that didn't come out very well. Uh, anyway, I, I try. And of course, I can do the adventures uh, shopkeeper. You pay this much. No, that's too low. Okay, I'll send it to you. And now my voice is going out. Thanks a lot, guys. <clears throat> okay. Let's drink a little water. All right. Um, to answer your second question, I'd probably draw the outline and such uh, with regular pencils and then digitally ink and shade it via some offs- um, some art software. Um, as for uh, collecting Star Fox stuff, I probably would. I already have a small collection of Star Fox related stuff. And when I actually get a real job and have some money, I might expand it to uh, a lot of other things. So I hope that... Uh, that email was uh, was worth it, you guys, uh, with me screaming at you in different voices that don't resemble uh, the Star Fox characters at all. All right, so Fox of Infinity writes, I was just listening to the Crystal Archive podcast, um, number two, as I missed the original one. 
Uh, and I was wondering, uh, the Crystal Archive is now already in... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was listening to the Crystal Archive podcast, uh, and I saw the... Uh, well, he's basically saying that he saw version 2. And now, I was wondering, now that the Crystal Archive is in version 3, and I've seen what version 2 looks like, um, what did version 1 look like? And also, I was wondering if you happen to know what the default font is for Mac OS X. Well, um, you know what? I thought I'd kept a, a, a copy of the original version, at least the layout of the original version. But it turns out I didn't. I didn't even have a picture of it. Um, I thought I saved it, but I guess I didn't. Um, I only have versions going back to the very early days of version 2. Um, basically, it was very similar, only the title bar um, did not stretch all the way to the sides. It, um, it was the width of the page. It was a fixed width. I think it was about 600 pixels wide. Um, it was rounded on the corners for the top and underneath. Um, instead of having a navigation on the going down the side, um, a vertical list we had a horizontal tab um, based navigation links um, the site only had a couple of pages and um, all the images shared one page all the videos were on one page all of the info which is now articles was on one page um, the black the background was a light gray with some dots and I think I had the same blue black and white color scheme as before though but otherwise, it was it was very different. As for uh, what fonts are in Mac OS X, um, you can go to this website, John J O N Mega M E G A dot com slash Iceman slash stuff slash fonts, and it has a list and download location for the default fonts for Mac OS X. And also not listed there is Helvetica, which is also used. And finally, our last question is by Austin. Hello, my name is Austin. I'm a pretty big follower of the Crystal Archive and frequently check up on the surprisingly common Crystal-related news. Before I get to the point, I would first like to say, great job, the site is fantastic, and you have made a brilliant addition to the Crystal fanbase. Continuing, I recently scoured the expanses of the internet in search of a Crystal t-shirt. However, I was unable to find even one, let alone a Star Fox shirt of any kind. In that, in regard, I would like to suggest the addition of a store to your site, perhaps using Zazzle or even Cafe Press. This could be, for lack of a better term, uh, this would be, for lack of a better term, completely awesome. Thank you for your time reading this email. And I have to, and you will have my many thanks if you would reply. Well, I did reply, and I said, sadly, that even if I wanted to do that, and I had the time to design and make t-shirts, um, even through Cafe Press, I don't think I legally can. You see, making money off of, a, off of an official property is strictly prohibited. If you want to do a one-time thing, like have a shirt design or something, um, then you can go to Cafe Press and, and do it for yourself. Just send in your shirt, um, and then... They'll make it and then have them send a copy to you. And after that, they'll probably take it down rather quickly once they realize that you've violated some rules. But by then, you'll already have a shirt. And I, I know someone who's done this sort of thing before, so it does work. And anyway, so yeah, good luck with that. Uh, that covers the all of the remaining emails. Um, I just thought of something while doing the podcast that I forgot to mention. Uh, a little piece of news, not not very big, but... Um, I did, uh, I did some, at some point, and I guess I did not write a, uh, a news update for this, but in the articles section of the Crystal Archive, you will now find under site articles an FAQ. I've written an FAQ page for us, and it just covers the most frequently asked questions, and I, I put the disclaimer at the top saying, now basically, if I receive emails um, from now on that, that basically ask these questions, um, which is you know common since they are frequently asked questions, um, I'm going to just have to refer you to this page rather than um, actually give my reason in full in the email. Um, and I certainly won't talk about it on the podcast because I think people are getting kind of bored of people continually asking me what ending I like in command. I mean, I've received that question... 
10 or 15 times, and I've explained my answer in full several times. So uh, don't don't send, you know, if it's on the FAQ, it's not that I don't want to hear your emails. And if you have a different spin on that question, then that's fine. Go ahead and email me. But uh, these are the questions that uh, hopefully can answer your question before you even have to email me. It's a convenience issue. It's not, it's not convenience uh, and inconvenience to email me. It's just... Uh, it'd make it faster than you actually having to type out an email if it's some common question so check that out if you haven't already and that's the news and emails and interview with thomas the creator of Star Fox passive fate so um i hope you've enjoyed it this has been episode number 21 if you have any questions at all um as long as it's not on the faq uh, page um just email me um at mr crystal at gmail.com um, and yeah, I'm, I'm also trying to get myself available via chat. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll see. Um, look for that in the future. Um, I've got a lot of small things and big things to post in the coming days. So look forward to that. Um, and I've just really been enjoying my break from school this last week. So thank you all for listening. This has been the Crystal Archive Podcast. I'm Mr. Crystal and... Have a great day.